entanglement holds one of the most profound implications central to the concept of consciousness. So today I'm going to be breaking down exactly what quantum entanglement is so that we can understand this concept from a higher perception. Quantum entanglement is the name of the phenomenon when two or more particles become entangled to such an extent that they become one. They operate and act and behave as though they are one particle in space and time, and this can even be measured. Countless tests can be able to replicate the same exact effects when it comes to measuring entangled particles. And this feature is that once entangled particles are measured, they each take on the opposite orientation of spin, otherwise known as their angular momentum. What this means is that every particle that's entangled, whether that's a photon or an atom, or even at the subatomic level, such as an electron, once it's entangled, it now represents different positions of its wholeness, or what we call superposition. Now, the superposition is super important to know when we're talking about quantum entanglement, because a superposition is how a particle would behave outside of space and time. It's in its form of oneness. You could look at the superposition of every particle as it being in its wave function state, meaning its pure potential state. It has yet to be defined yet until that potential has collapsed into the physical realm, otherwise known as the explicate order. And once it's in the explicate order, the material realm, now it has become defined and it has become located in space and time into a specific particle. So at a deeper level of reality, at the subquantum level, all of the particles that make up the physical manifested world are operating in an ecstatic state of undifferentiated oneness. So you could look at the subatomic level as this wormhole where it's in two phases of consciousness at the same time. It's in its pure potential form, but once it's observed, it's actually functioning in its particle form or its defined physical manifestation. Now what's really cool is that quantum entanglement has been proven to travel faster than the speed of light. But the reason why it appears to be traveling faster than the speed of light is because it is non-local. Quantum entanglement is implying and pointing to a deeper underlying nature of reality of oneness. And the only boundaries within this oneness now become some that are a conscious barrier, meaning that the phenomenon of quantum entanglement is not traveling faster than the speed of light at all because it's not traveling at all. It is pointing to the fact that this whole universe is one holographic projection so that if something that is entangled shifts, it takes place instantly, no different than how the reflection of a mirror would instantly reflect and shift that. So in other words, if quantum entanglement has proven what mystics have known forever, which is that reality is non-local, then it doesn't just stop with entangled particles because where would that concept of entangled particles stop in non-locality? So what it's actually pointing to is, is that all particles are actually extensions of one consciousness and the fundamental nature of reality is non-local. So consciousness is operating outside of space and time and it's operating inside space and time as well. Only when it operates inside space and time, it now takes on the form of differentiation. This concept of non-locality, meaning that the universe is a holographic projection, is elaborately documented by David Bohm's discovery of the hollow sphere and the hollow plenum. But in my opinion, it was Walter Russell's work on the shapeless universe that both describes and explains it best. As close as one could come to layman's terms, he states, every point in the universe is an infinite mirrored extension from every point. Each point is the center of universal extension into that mirrored infinity, which ends at its point of beginning. The universe therefore can have no shape. Waves of light do not travel. They reproduce each other from wave field to wave field of space. The planes of zero curvature, which bound all wave fields, acts as a mirror to reflect light from one field into another. This sets up an appearance of light as traveling, which is pure illusion. So with the inherent nature of reality being non-local, one would then naturally ask, well then what makes some particles entangled and other particles appear not entangled? And that would have to do with the fact that throughout a holographic projection like we are in, that has non-locality being the foundation of this experience, then what would signify the boundaries that create entanglement for some particles 
and the illusion of not having entanglement for all in particles would be the soul, otherwise known as the consciousness unit. So the soul functions as one sanctified entity, and then you have another soul or another unit of consciousness that's also acting as an individuated, sanctified, whole unit. And within all of these different souls are actually comprised whatever particles are entangled. So with that, that means that even though the underlying nature of reality is pointing to non-locality, which means that all is one at the deepest level of reality, that then what comes into form and what creates this entanglement between particles where we can now see that some particles aren't fastened, they're not absolutely bound and entangled to other particles, but yet some are. So there is within this realm some form of boundaries or differentiation because some particles can be entangled and some particles aren't. And that depends on there being a soul. So the consciousness unit that is projected through the soul into this reality, every single particle that creates that consciousness, that being that has that soul, is what allows for quantum entanglement to work. So what this is saying is that every particle that creates that being, that consciousness unit, has all parts within it entangled. And it doesn't matter how far away any one of those parts is, whether it's a fingernail, whether it's a hair, if it belongs to that consciousness unit, that soul, then it could be across the world and they will still transfer and telepath information to one another instantaneously. Because at a deeper level of reality, that consciousness unit is one and there is no geographical or regional distance between them. So at the most outer shell, the most surface level of reality, quantum entanglement appears to only be taking place between one soul, one consciousness unit, and their own boundaries that identify their being. But yet at a deeper level of reality, if all of the nature of our physical existence is being projected from a hologram and it's non-local, then what this also means is that even quantum entanglement can be taking place at deeper levels that breach even outside of the one consciousness unit or the soul realm. And when it does this, this can be looked at as telepathing through the morphic field. Now the morphic resonance field is one of the most important terms in the spirit of this age. And it's also the level of reality where quantum entanglement takes place outside of the individuated consciousness unit. So it's the next layer of reality back where now we're having instantaneous information teleported to one another and it's traveling faster than the speed of light and it's done through quantum entanglement, but once you get to a certain level of reality where now your level of consciousness is tuned in to the higher nature of reality, all operating as one. So you could look at the morphic resonance field as now being able to instantaneously transfer information and thoughts to one another quicker than the speed of light, all through quantum entanglement, but at a more unified and fundamental nature of reality. So what's important to know about quantum entanglement is that we are not finished with understanding the true implications of what this phenomenon implies. So there's still gonna be even larger and larger and larger discoveries based off of this to where the term quantum entanglement might shift into a name that's even more accurate and appropriate as our consciousness understands this phenomenon even better. Now what all of this talk about non-locality has been building up to is that if each of us are our own consciousness unit that has an individual perception, but the underlying nature of reality is, is that all of the particles that make up all of the physical reality and all of the differentiation are essentially in a form of superpositionality meaning that they're in a pure waveform state and they're not defined yet until they come into physical reality and have been observed, then what that means is, is that our observation, our perception are all just different angles of the same particle that is represented as all of these different facets and all of these individuated atoms and subatomic levels. But because 
our individual perception all has these different apertures, let's call it, on that one particle, we now view all of that as a separate entity. And we view everything as separate. When the fabric of reality is that it's all one unified being that is being looked at through different angles or different perceptions. And our aperture makes everything look like it is in a separate state of consciousness but it is just one particle that is being viewed in so many different facets and interpreted through so many different consciousness units that it's giving the appearance as though it is several or it's separate and differentiated. And that one particle that we are all observing through our own individual consciousness is also in the superposition state. So it can take on the appearance as though it is many different forms it can excite itself into the state of electrons, while simultaneously exciting itself into the state of photons. It builds the appearance of motion through superimposing itself again and again through time. What we have yet to learn is that superposition does not end with an individual particle or even entangled particles. It is the truth of simultaneous. Superposition really means reality is simultaneous. So that one particle that we are all observing is not really a particle at all. It is consciousness in the state of observing itself. And the act of observing something alone is what makes everything take on different appearances. Because to observe anything is to interpret. And the hardware of our nervous system is designed to recognize patterns and to interpret. So we are interpreting something that is simultaneous, but we are not aware of it. We only see it in its multiple phases of spin. In layman's terms, reality is a continuum of one moment that consciousness is viewing through a myriad of apertures. So you could look at the unified field of consciousness as a fabric since it's all connected and unified. And this fabric, let's call it space and time, has within it, let's say on one part of the fabric, a perception. And that perception now creates a mirror reflection of that perception in another part of the fabric, meaning that they're all entangled and the fabric or the unified field of consciousness all moves in accordance with the perceptions of one another in a mirror or reflected like way. Well, that goes back to the beginning of this video when I was talking about how all particles that are quantumly entangled wear one aspect will immediately assume the orientation of their spin upward. Their counterpart, their entangled particle, will immediately assume and reflect the opposition of that. So it will complement it by being in the spin position downward. And so when you have the whole wave function operating through this fabric of space and time, or the unified consciousness field, what you have is actually every single consciousness unit mirror and reflecting something to every other single consciousness unit, kind of like in a, like a waveform, you could look at it that way at least if it's all connected through a fabric of unified field of consciousness. So this phenomenon, which currently goes by the name quantum entanglement, indirectly proves that we are in a mirrored universe. And not only are we in a mirrored universe, but also that the deeper nature beyond this reality that we are being projected into this reality from is one of a non-local space that takes place in a realm of pure potential, also known by physics as the frequency domain. And this frequency domain, where all the particles exist, but not in their particle form, in their superposition form, meaning their pure potential wave function state. This realm can also be called the sea of consciousness. And this consciousness that is projecting into this universe as all these different viewpoints and different units of consciousness, we can look at as being the true realm of as above, so below, as within, so without, as the universe, so the soul. I hope this made sense, but if not, don't blame me, blame the self-reflecting universe. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for higher dimensional guidance through spiritual awakenings. See you next time.